Okay. Hey, everybody. This is Bobby Halden with Fire Engineering. Thanks for dropping in with us. Uh, I've got with me one of the guys who I hold in I the highest esteem. And uh, it, it's Eddie Kelly, president of the IAFF, uh, recently elected in an a incredibly, I think, valuable experience. I think all of us learned a great deal about the union. We learned a great deal about Eddie. He had several very worthy opponents who were great guys who are still very active in the IAFF. So it was fantastic to see uh, the union working as the union should work. And Eddie's been hard at work since he got in there. And, and now we have a, a crisis. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Uh, with, with the COVID crisis going on in our nation, with this pandemic. And now that we have some of these mandates, many of you have reached out to me in uh, cities across the country um, with concerns. And so I reached out to Eddie and like the true gentleman that he is, he had some pressing issues that he had to attend to, but I, this was his very first opportunity. He just left the meeting, honest to God, went back to his hotel room so he could do this, so he could let you know uh, what the IAFF is doing right now in regards to these mandates and, and, and how he feels that you can best go forward uh, in the best interest of yourself, the fire service, and, and, and this union. So, Eddie, without any further ado, um, if you would like to give us the IAFF position and some advice to your members. Sure, Bobby. First off, thank you so much for having me. It's good to see your face, my friend. Uh, you're you're a, a good pal and a, and a confidant, and I appreciate it. And uh, it's good to see and good to see you doing well. Um, these are obviously, you know, the old Chinese curse. May you live in interesting times. Well, uh, they got us all with this one. Uh, the pandemic has really wreaked havoc on the world. And uh, it, it's no joke. I mean, we have lost uh, 43 members in the IFF to COVID-19. Uh, just three in the last two weeks. One this morning, we actually announced at 11 o'clock, uh, Mario Moya from uh, Jacksonville, Florida, only 51 years old. And some of our members, I want to point out, one we lost was only 28 years old and he had only come on the job uh, the year before. So not all of, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of people who succumb to COVID have coexisting conditions and underlying root causes that, that their bodies just weren't strong enough to overcome COVID. And I can tell you without rhyme or reason, other people I know that have cancer in their lungs and emphysema have gotten COVID and beat it. Um, and, and the one person I'm thinking of is 79 years old. Yeah. Oh, Bobby. Oh, I, mean, it, quite, it. I was thinking of somebody else, but I, I myself had COVID and it gave me a pretty good beat. And I'm pretty sure that it's got a pretty long, um, a, a long, you know, they call it long COVID. It, it, I've had some, what I feel to be long-term effects of it. And, uh, and it's scary. And it's clearly shown, you know, the, the science, and I get it. We have a lot of our members that uh, have, hold very strong beliefs that getting vaccinated is bad for them. I can tell you we have four dues-paying members of my immediate family, and at least one of them holds that, that belief. And um, we have a lot of members that, that feel very strongly the other way, that getting vaccinated is an obligation that we all should hold as humans to protect each other. That being said, everyone's entitled to their own opinions. And this is an emerging, evolving um, new reality that we're living in. And, and my fear is that it's gonna go on for a long, long time. But as the IAFF, um, we've done everything in our power to stay on top of it. And not only from the very beginning of this, when our health and safety department, uh, when no one really ever heard of what what COVID was. And uh, we, we delved into it and tried to send out best protocols and, and the work that we did along the way through Congress to make sure that our members that do succumb to COVID-19 and have PSOB protections. And we, we've done great things as a union to protect our members. We find ourselves in a new reality as this emerging issue of mandatory vaccinations is really beginning to take hold um, throughout our two countries representing the United States and Canada. And that's a, a uncomfortable place. Most of us have a visceral reaction to mandates of any kind. It is what we would call for those of us, uh, us in the United States, un-American. And, uh, you know, I come from Boston where we taxation without representation, got some teeth thrown in the harbor and the rest is history. We don't like being dictated to. And, and as a union, um, it's our nature to rebel. 
uh, and stand up for our members. But the reality is, is as our legal team has uh, looked at this, the reality is 100 years ago, a case actually in Massachusetts, the United States Supreme Court said that employers can force vaccines on employees. And it, it, it by more and more, we, we, I know that uh, our, our members, our, uh, our representatives in Canada had a meeting uh, just earlier this week with all the other Canadian labor councils and came to the conclusion that up there le legally, there's not a strong argument against mandatory vaccinations either. And the prevailing eminent reality is that um, trying to stand in front of that train coming to town um, it is not a good, it, it's not survivable. We can't win that argument. But what we do have is an obligation to our members that have legitimate reasons that they shouldn't be vaccinated. If your primary care physician or your treating physician for uh, other ailments that you have is advising you that you shouldn't be vaccinated, then you shouldn't. And we as your union will fight for you. And you need to talk to your, you know, your local union reps to make sure that if you have those issues, uh, that you're being protected. And that doesn't include, you know, I mean, hey, listen, I'm a fireman first and foremost. So we, you know, the immediate reaction is we'll start our own religion in the back room of the firehouse. And then we, we you don't have to get vaccinated. Well, the reality is, uh, unless you have a le very legitimate reason not to be, the employer has has a lot of authority here. And uh, at the end of the day, when you look at the numbers, we've been very clear as the IFF leadership that we encourage vaccinations. The numbers are pretty strong. Uh, I have a, I talked to uh, our district vice president. Uh, down in the 12th district representing Florida, which has seen a lot of issues. And, and they have our Florida deal, uh, Firebase DMS, their ambulance are waiting an hour to drop people at the ER. They actually started sending engine companies to wait with the patient until they could be admitted into the hospital so they could get the ambulance back on the road. Um, we're looking at, when you look at the numbers, they're, they're pretty astounding. Uh, and I know in South Florida, they had to go into surge protocols uh, in the hospitals. But it, 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 when they looked at, this is Tuesday's numbers, by the way, so about 48 hours off. But in 42 states they looked at, they had 166 million people vaccinated in those 42 states. Out of those vaccin, out of the vaccinated population, 7,600 were hospitalized and 1,587, they estimate, died of COVID. So if you've been vaccinated, and there is breakthrough cases. And, you know, you see now this, uh, the emerging talk about even if you've been vaccinated, get boosters, um, you know, our health and safety team looking at all that. But at the end of the day, the numbers are suggestive that vaccinations do work. And uh, this, is a, this is a new world with COVID-19. I mean, I remember, you know, in the very beginning, Bob, you were the, you were the first person to explain to me how, how the medical society was behind on this COVID-19 that we were treating it like pneumonia and it was having the opposite effect of actually helping us. And uh, as much as this is um, a relatively new thing, we're coming up on, you know, you know, I guess we're coming up on a year and a half of, of living with it. And, and as new um, variants emerge, uh, it's becoming worse and worse uh, as we deal with new variants. But, it's a, it's, everything is emerging, you know, and we're trying to adapt to it and stay on top of it, not only from the health and safety standpoint, but as I said, also our legal team is trying to analyze how to best protect our members who, who can't get vaccinated, you know, and you do have, we do have protections in place. I mean, you are afforded protections as an employee under the, under the LMRDA. There's protections there. There's also uh, protections under Title Seven of the, um, the um, 1964 bill, Bobby, uh, civil, help rights, me. Civil, rights. The civil rights bill, Title VII the Civil Rights Bill, as well as the Americans with Disabilities Act. And up in Canada, the um, human rights legislation that protects individuals. So you, you do have protections, you know, but as an employee, there is uh, very little legal um, 
Very little one, legal protection from mandates. One of the questions that's come out, and, and I haven't seen the IFF uh, directly address this, and I don't know if you're if you're still formulating your response. I totally understand. Don't mean to put you on the spot, but several of the or several of the firefighters have contacted me from Portland and New York and other places. The mandate for testing applies only to the unvaccinated, whereas we know that vaccinated people, I've got two relatives who are vaccinated who then got COVID, can also get COVID. So their question was about the um, kind of unequal treatment of vaccinated versus unvaccinated. And, and they're, they're, they're totally willing to be tested. They just feel that if they're going to test the unvaccinated, they should test the vaccinated as well. Have, have you guys, have you looked into that at all yet as, as far as membership goes? In other words, if it's an IAFF house, um, should, should they test everybody or just the unvaccinated? Because we know now the data is in that the breakthrough case, gov the governor of Texas, for goodness sakes, uh, case in point, breakthrough cases are are very, very common. Uh, and, and the vaccine, some of them are, uh, most of them are about 60%, I'm hearing, some are 40%. So if we're going to test, some of the guys are saying, and this is just to me, and, and if you haven't formulated it, Mr. President, I completely understand you, you speak for 300,000 guys. I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, they're, not, they're okay with being tested. They just want everybody to be tested. Yeah, I mean, there are so many different, depending on where you are, the federal government had the enhanced testing program we're also hearing about, which I think is egregious, um, places where they're threatening termination for failure to vaccinate. Um, but as all of that, it, it's, like I said, it's kind of an emerging issue. And that in particular is an interesting case. I mean, clearly we know that there are breakthrough cases. Uh, I know that there was a report, uh, that came out of Israel, um, yesterday speaking to, to breakthrough cases in the, in the vaccinated, um, which for those of you that maybe have not heard this, but if you're vaccinated and still get infected, they call it breaking through your vaccination. So the breakthrough case is very possible. Um, the good news on breakthroughs is that the, the, the positive, the, the outcomes are most likely very positive percentage wise. Um, when it comes to testing, um, as far as uh, employers go, you know, New York City's talking September 13th of its testing. The difference between, you know, trying to um, differentiate between the unvaccinated and the vaccinated, given the fact that breakthrough is possible. Um, that's kind of a, a new one on me, to be honest with you. Yeah, I, and, I, I apologize. I thought it might have been, but obviously it's going to be coming your way. Yeah, but, it's interesting. It's, and, it's, uh, trust me, anything that you put up, Eddie, we're going to post. You know, So if you get, get with the board and your team and, and you can get an answer for that so that the locals will have something to work off of. The, the other question, if you could take back to your team that the guys got uh, to us is about uh, employers having them sign a waiver, not holding the employer liable. Um, you know, the, the, city's, the guy, Jim Palero, shot us a note saying he's being forced to sign a waiver saying he won't come after his city. For That's ridiculous. I mean, yeah. if they're going to, we know that there's a potential. It happens with pretty much every vaccination. There's a possibility you could have an adverse reaction to that. And the one of the things that we're encouraging every one of our affiliates to do is make sure you get to the table whether it's, you know, meet and confer or whatever your legal position is to get there, whether it's just demanding to sit with the politicians that are enabling this and make sure that there are protections in place. Namely, if you do have an adverse reaction that the employer owns you in the ailments that might come with that adverse reaction, um, especially if you're going to mandate. Uh, and I think that that goes beyond that. See, and that's what, makes, that's what makes you the leader that you are, because the, the troops need to hear this from you. And I can't I can't tell you how much, you know, these and, and I'm not I'm not speaking ill of the local leaders. It's tough to communicate with everybody as chaotic as things are right now. But you being willing to come on and, and, and answer these questions and, and your honesty. Hey, we haven't thought about that. Let's, you know, get with your, you know, we'll get with the team. But. I encourage everybody to go to IAFF, you know, dot org, it's dot org, right? It's a dot yes, the, dot org, IAFF dot org. org. If you're a member, you can get in. I, I know that uh, Eddie's got his whole team available on there. You can ask questions. You can get your questions answered. And and if your local is not being responsive, you know, reach out to the international. They'll they'll Eddie's got a Eddie's a nice guy, but when you get Eddie mad, look out. 
<laughs> yeah, listen, I look at it like that. I mean, we have our systems in place. You know what I mean? We, we as the IFF headquarters in Washington, D.C., can't be the first point of contact for 324,000 members. You have a local that you're affiliated with that has its own hierarchy, its own executive board, whether it's your shift rep, your house steward, your, your, your company delegate, whatever your hierarchies of your union, utilize it. And we're going to have cases because it's inevitable where we have members that have, whether it's an adverse reaction or are being forced, even though they have credible protections under existing law that they shouldn't be vaccinated, that we're going to stand right next to your local union, your, your local president and your state president, and your district vice president of the international. And we're going to stand right next to them and provide whatever, whatever firepower we need to muster to protect each other. But, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we all took the, took an oath to do this job. And, and you know, it's not our, Ameri um, our American citizenship that entitles us to the liberty. It's when we took an oath to be firefighters and accept that employment for an employer, it changes your, your, you know, what protections you actually have. And uh, this is one that we, we got to, to a great extent, uh, stay down the barrel of. And, you know, if we have those issues that inevitably will arise where we have people that, that are being victimized by, you know, what I would call oppressive employers, then that's what we do is take them head on and fight them. And uh, that's not going to be the case of, you know, a perfectly healthy person that has no um, protections under whether it's the Civil Rights Act, uh, human rights up in Canada, or, you know, any other legal shelter from what the employer vaccine mandate could be. Then, you know, my advice to you is you probably don't have a strong case if you want to go down, uh, you know, if you want to be the guy that jumps on the proverbial grenade, it just might get you. And I'm sure we can help you there. But if you're one of those people that has a legitimate reason for not getting your vaccination, you're getting mandated to do, then that's what we're here for. We'll fight like hell for you. Well, that's, and, and I think that meet and confer should be happening in, in every yeah. At the state level, how does that work, Eddie? Does, does a... Like I know, I know, like Governor Cuomo, or future future former Governor Cuomo, <laughs> to be more correct, it, it had, has mandated it statewide. So those can can miss can they they still should go to their local, right? Absolutely, absolutely. There's there's going to be the avenue where your state and provincial organizations up in Canada have their political. Um, obligation to try to make sure that the implementation has protections built into it um, for, for people that need it. But ultimately, if you're being adversely impacted by that mandate, it starts with your local union that has to stand up, for, you know, stand up for you. And, and, you know, you have to have, whether it's your doctor or your primary care physician or whomever is, is advising you that you should not get that shot or, or whether you have a legitimate release, you know, objection to it, then you have to have, you know, be able to base it. I, I would, you know, no one does it better than firefighters when we find ways around to fight things. So I would be, you know, I would be cautious on uh, starting, your own, starting your own religion on the main floor, on the back of the main floor. Do dental implants count? Could I, could I go with that? I'm just... <laughs> if you got a doctor that says so, maybe you got, maybe you got a case. I'm just kidding. But you know, I mean, uh, always gonna, love, the firehouse legal discussions are always wonderful because they, they and they're what and, and we have some of the brightest guys in the country working with us. That's, really. they, I mean, that's the truth. I mean, oh, I, I have a lot have, of smart people. I have worked with guys that had their law degrees. I worked with a guy who was a dentist. He was oh. a full time firefighter and he had a dental practice. Uh, you know, I mean, uh, so, you know, we, we laugh about ourselves, but we're pretty clever people. And, and I think that, and I, again, I want to thank you for, for doing this. I know a lot, there's a lot of angst out there. And I think that just hearing you and, and, and your willingness to come on, let, let's, the, let's the troops know that, it, it, that you're at the helm and, and you're paying attention to it and, um, and you're looking at everything. And I think that, I think it's a valid question about disparage of treatment. If you're going to test people, test everybody, because we do have breakthrough cases. So if it's, you know, I, I think that's a legitimate, uh, way to approach it because then it's not so much coercion as it is 
uh, awareness and, and, and prevention and protection, which we're all for. You know, you want right. to test everybody, test everybody. So that's where I fall down on that one for sure. You know what I mean? And that's a, well, you, you just brought up a very good point is, is the idea of additional testing to force your hand or is it to protect people? And if it's to protect people, then, then it's something we have to look at. And that's, that's, a legitimate, that's a legitimate concern. I'm, I'm all about that. You want the workplace to be safe and people to be safe. I'm fine with that. So, again, is there anything else you want to share with the troops before we sign off, boss? Because I, I do I would say, listen, a couple things. One, remember our fallen. Um, this is a very serious, serious virus. And it can kill you, even if you're perfectly healthy. And um, vaccinations scientifically the proof shows they work when you look at the numbers and there's a lot of questions out there but i believe that getting vaccinated is the single best way it can protect you and your family and the citizens we took an oath to protect so just remember our fallen and uh be careful out there be as safe as you can and bobby thank you for everything you do i mean you, you put your you you've put your whole life to the fire, <clears throat> fire service and left it better than you found it. Thank you, brother. Well, uh, you know, I, I love this place just like you. And I will say that I invited you to FDIC 2021. And I, I know you had you had all this going on, so we missed you. But you, you Busy tell me time right now. Hey, you tell Maybe me 22. If you're you let me know and we'll give you time on the stage. As you well know, we'd love to have you talk to the troops. And I know they'd love to see you. So I'd love to do it. Yeah. You're, you're, excited. The, the invitation is always there. Just so you know, we did reach out to um, the, our friends at the IAFC. They're they're formulating their you know formal uh, answer. Um, so uh, spoke with them yesterday and today. Um, they've got a couple of drafts that they're working on. Um, so uh, just so you know that, and and we 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 have the NVFC's uh, position uh, posted. Um, so very much like yours. You know, encouraging uh, encouraging people to do it, but the MVP is different. It's a different wheelhouse, so uh, than yours, obviously. So, um, but we absolutely are grateful to you, um, and and also to to the transparency that you've shown throughout this entire uh, event. So, um, thank you so much. It's it's just awesome to see you. Sorry we couldn't see you at Redmond, but uh, I know we'll catch you at the next one. There'll be another one. Yeah, exactly. We'll see you at the next one. All right. Be safe, Bobby. Good talking to you, my friend. God bless you.